Rocky Stage 3, Level 8, work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors. So let's dabble with shape and space. Well, the first thing could arguably be under algebra. But anyway, distinguish formally by considering dimensions. So which of these formally could be area. Now what do we mean by dimensions? Well we need the first dimension, the second dimension and three dimensions. That is what we mean by the dimensions. One dimension is length. Now, but when I use the word length I don't just mean long, I mean wide, high, deep. I also mean circumference, I also mean radius, I also mean diameter, I mean anything that's measured as a distance, whether it's a straight distance or a curved distance. Two-dimensional is when you have, say, length and width, such as a rectangle, the area. So two-dimensional is in fact area. Three-dimensional is volume. So you've got one dimension, which is length of any description, two dimension, which is area, area and three dimension, which is volume. So which of these could be area? PQ means a dimension multiplied by a dimension, a length multiplied by a length, which would work out to be an area. P squared means a length of P multiplied by a length of P, which it would produce an area. So these could be area. Whereas P times Q times R would be three dimensions multiplied together, so that would be a volume. P times Q times Q would also be a volume. Now if you get a number in front, this will make no difference whatsoever to the dimension of the formula or expression. It will make the numerical answer 8 times bigger, the numerical answer 7 times bigger, the numerical answer 4 times bigger, but won't make any difference to the dimension. So this is Q times Q times R, which is a volume. This is R times R times R, which is a volume. Now here we've got a dimension, made three times bigger, added to a dimension, made five times bigger. We're going to be just adding a dimension to a dimension, which is adding a length to a length, which is, if you like, making a longer length. This is, in fact, one-dimensional. So it's just length, one dimension. Here we've got a length added to a length, which will be a length, so that's one dimensional. And that multiplied by four, which is make it four times as long, so that's in fact one dimensional, so it's just a length. Here we've got a length multiplied by a length, so that will be an area. Here we've got a length multiplied by a length, which is an area. So we're adding an area to an area and just getting a bigger area. Here S squared, which is a dimension times a dimension, so that's an area. That's making it seven times bigger, but it's still an area. Here, we've got T times T, which is a length times a length, which is a area. The 8 is just making the 8 times bigger area. And we're adding that area to an area and ending up with an area. Similarly, this is an area. Adding an area, so it's an area. Made 9 times bigger, that's an area. S times T is an area, T times T is an area, adding an area to an area. Pi is just like a number. It just makes the answer a certain times bigger. So Pi D is in fact a length. We know it's the circumference of a circle, so it's a length around the circle. The Pi makes no difference to the dimension whatsoever. It just makes the answer numerically bigger. So R squared means R times R, so that is an area. So we've distinguished between the formulae or expressions by looking at their dimension. To find missing sides and angles in right angled triangles using trigonometry. So, let's find the value of X. First off, we recognise that it's trigonometry because we have a right-angled triangle and you must have a right-angled triangle for trigonometry. 
and therefore it's something to do with sine or cosine or tangent. And as soon as you appreciate that, I recommend that you write down all three of those formulae so they're actually in front of you as you're working through the question rather than keeping them bubbling around in your mind. We're going to be working with this angle of 72 degrees and with respect to this angle this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. Therefore we're going to be needing the formula with these two letters in. So we choose the appropriate formula We fill in the information of the angle. The opposite is the x that we're trying to find. And the 4.6 is the value of the hypotenuse. We call this the unknown, quite obviously, because we don't know what it is. If the unknown is on top, then we multiply. It doesn't matter which, which way round you write this, because when you multiply two things together you get the same answer whichever way you write it. At that stage we pick up the calculator. Now we're back to the very important thing that you must know your own calculator. On a calculator there is a mode button and as far as the sine, cosine and tangent formulae are concerned there are three modes. Degrees, radians and gradient. If you have your calculator in the wrong mode, you will get everything wrong. That's all you need to know. If you haven't got your calculator in the correct mode for trigonometric ratios, you'll get it all wrong. Your calculator must be in the degree mode, which in mine shows a little d down there. It might show a little d or a little deg. The point is know your own calculator and make sure it is in degree mode. If it is, you just type it in. So we've got 4.6 multiplied by the sine of 72 degrees equals. And you'll get a load of numbers, which you should write them all down. I'll just write a few of them down. And then write a sensible answer. So let's go for one decimal place. We'll look at that again, I think. As soon as you spot it's a trigonometric question, write down your three ratios. So they're in front of you. Label your triangle. If we're working with this angle, then this is going to be called the opposite. This is the longest side, so it's the hypotenuse, therefore this must be the adjacent. So I'm going to be needing the formula that's got these two letters in. So let's write it down. Fill the information in. The angle is 79 degrees. The opposite is 9 centimetres. And the adjacent is what I want to find. Now this time, where is the unknown? It's underneath. When the unknown was on top, we multiply it. When the unknown is underneath, we divide. However, a division, it always matters which way you divide it. So we better, I think, swap these two round because that lets us know that it's got to be 9 divided by the tangent of 79. A fraction means top divided by bottom, so swapping these two round lets you know which way the division goes. That will work out the value of x. 9 divided by the tangent of 79 equals, I should write everything down, I just write a little bit of it down, and now we'll do it to one decimal place.